could that be? Could that be my son, Simon? Mm, morning, Dad. Yes, it is my son, Simon. The same Simon who promised, yes, promised, that he'd get up early and take his sister, Jenny, to the railway station. <laughs> Sorry, Dad, I forgot. You forgot? When Jenny spent ten minutes banging you on the head with a haversack to wake you up, you forgot why she was doing it? I'm a heavy sleeper. You're awake now. Yeah, that's because some idiot came home from the station, revved the car up in the drive, slammed the front door and turned every radio on in the house. Oh, I wonder who could have done that. Oh, I remember now. It was me. Dad, why did you do that? Well, I thought it'd be fun. What made you think that? Because that's what you did at 1 a.m. Thought there might be something in it. Where were you, anyway? I refuse to answer. On what grounds? On the grounds that I'm not awake enough to think of a good excuse? Well, never mind. I forgive you. You do? Yeah, I'm that kind of guy. Since when? Ah, da 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 What da 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 Don't do that. Don't do what? Don't put your buttery knife in the veggie mites. <laughs> because we get little bits of butter all through it and we end up with albino veggie mites. <laughs> so? So, God meant Vegemite to be rich, lustrous and black, not pale, pallid and piebald. Dad, this way it saves you time in the morning. How so? Because when you do it like this, you can put the butter and the Vegemite on at the same time. Yes, well, I don't wish to do that. Anyway, I forgive you again. You do? I do. You're being very forgiving this morning. Mmm. Because something wonderful is going to happen. What? What time is it? 7.21. Then it's about to happen. What is? Something really, really good. Yeah, but what? Follow me and you shall see. Dad, has getting up early in the morning affected your brain? No, 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 no. Just be patient, son. Why are we here? Good question, son. I suppose it's all part of God's master plan. <laughs> me here. Because any minute now, Debbie is going to scream. Why? Because she's in the shower. Oh? So, at 7.22, the hot water is going to run out. <laughs> Four, three, two. Oh, oh. slow. Why <laughs> Because it happens to me at exactly this time every morning. But today I got up early and I experienced a pleasure I have not had in years. What was that? A hot shower. It was great. The water felt all hot on my skin. You've gone mad. Oh, no. I haven't had a hot shower since you two crashed through puberty. <laughs> my showers are usually lukewarm by the time you've finished. Mayor? Yeah. For a while there, I thought they'd stop delivering hot water to this house. <laughs> then I thought, no, maybe my nerve ends are being dulled by age. What do you mean? Well, you know, as you get older, policemen get younger and showers get colder. <laughs> but today, it was hot and I feel rejuvenated. <laughs> Debbie? Oh, Debbie, is everything all right? Who's the idiot? You saw the water. Oh, I wonder who could have done that. Let me think. Oh, I remember now. It was me. <laughs> I'll get you for this. Oh, what a beautiful morning. <laughs> that, that was really unkind. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Didn't you love it? <laughs> yeah, she did look a bit like a half drowned hamster, didn't she? <laughs> have a long shower in the morning yes but you keep right on having them don't you oh, no, i just thought i'd get my own back well it was really thoughtless oh no i thought about it a lot <laughs> well how come you're allowed to have a long shower in the morning i didn't have a long shower you didn't no deborah i had three long showers <laughs> i kept getting out and it felt so good i kept getting right back in again serves you right deb you're always in there for hours oh look who's talking i have to bang on the door every morning to get you out <laughs> You certainly got out fast enough this morning. Should have heard yourself. Eh, hey, you got out of Not funny. <laughs> yes, it is. Dad. No, no, Simon's right. It's really funny. And do you know the funniest part of all? The part that Simon's forgotten? What? He hasn't had his shower yet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Betty, could you pass me those measurements, please? <laughs> Betty, could you... <laughs> Betty, I'm here to see you. Oh, Mr. Kelly, you shouldn't do that. Shouldn't do what? Well, you shouldn't wake me suddenly. You started my brain bouncing. What are you talking about, brain bouncing? Well, it is. It's going kaboinka, kaboinka, from one side of my head to the other. That's because it's got so much room to move in there. Anyway, why are you so tired? Are you sick? No, I'm just worn out. It's my job. Oh, Betty, how could you be worn out from your job? You haven't done anything. You walked in here 40 minutes ago and crashed face down on the typewriter. How could that make you tired? No, no not my this job, my night job. You're working at night? What are you doing? I'm a security guard. <laughs> you, 
a security guard. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> You're right. It's hilarious. <laughs> they don't give you a gun, do they? No, I'm on probation. Hank's got the gun. Hank? Yeah, he's my boss. He's showing me the ropes. We're keeping the savage streets safe for the citizens of this great metropolis. Oh, says that in your training manual, does it? No, it says that on, on the door of the car. Oh, Betty and Hank. Sound like Batman and Robin. <laughs> Hank says. Yeah, well, I hope he can be trusted with a gun. Oh, yeah, Hank's very responsible with all of them. All of what? All of his guns. God, how many's he got, for Pete's sake? Eight. Eight guns? Betty, you're driving around with a gunfight at the OK Corral. Oh, no, Hank's been properly trained. He says you should only ever draw your weapon at, uh, in dire circumstances as a last resort or when you feel like it. <laughs> Betty, what on earth prompted you to take on such a crazy job? It's not crazy. I got a free uniform and a company dog. A company dog? Yeah, well, only for a borrower. I've got to give him back every night. Oh, Mr. Clear, you should see him. He's just beautiful. Yeah? And what's the name of this beautiful dog? His name's Satan and he's a great big black Doberman. <gasps> But when I first got him, I don't know what was wrong. Who trained him, but he was really terrible. Yeah, he was? Yeah, he used to bark and growl and show his fangs, and he was really savage. But I fixed that quick enough. You did? Yep, I hit him on the nose with a rolled-up newspaper. <laughs> that did the trick. Betty, how on earth could a rolled-up newspaper calm a savage, ravening, blood-crazed Doberman? It's an old bushy trick Stan showed me. You wrap the newspaper around a spanner. <laughs> What did Hank have to say about that? Oh, he, he said it wouldn't work. But then you know, he started rubbing up against my leg and licking my ear. Who, Satan? No, Hank. <laughs> I had to hit him with the, with the newspaper, too. He learned a lot faster than Satan. Betty, this is idiotic. You cannot spend your nights with a, with a gun-crazed sex maniac and a savage guard dog. I told you, he's not savage anymore. He's really gentle now. Well, that's even worse. I mean, what use is a gentle guard dog? They're supposed to be savage. Mr. Kelly, I need the money. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I, I know what you're doing. You're trying to shame me into giving you that raise, aren't you? Yes. Well, it won't work. I'm giving you a raise when I feel like it, and not before. Well, then. Uh, never mind well, then. We both know what well, then means. <laughs> What is well then, then? Well then means you're going to threaten to ring John Laws and tell him me, but we both know you're not going to do it. I will so too. Betty, you haven't got the nerve to ring him. And even if you do get the nerve... Oh, what will you do? I'll hit you over the nose with a rolled up newspaper. <laughs> with a spanner inside. Classics. <sighs> Look, Betty, how about some coffee? Mr. Kelly, I do not get paid enough to go traipsing around after you making coffee. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not going to drag me into that again. I will make the coffee. And I do not expect to be paid any extra money for doing it. Well, don't put three teaspoons of sugar in my mouth. <laughs> I do not. You do so too. Well, just consider yourself lucky I'm making the coffee for you. <laughs> oh, sometimes I wonder who's the boss around here. My kids ignore me. My secretary won't make coffee. <laughs> Oh, isn't that typical? Why don't they ever turn off the radio when they leave the room? Hello. Hello? It's Lawsy. Hello. Hello. Oh, get on with it. Hello. Is this me? <laughs> well, look, it certainly isn't me, darling, so I assume it's you, yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh. Look, we've, we've done that. Could we move on, please? Is that you, Mr. Laws? <sighs> look, just stop and think about it a moment, sweetheart. You have rung what is commonly known as the John Law Show. Who did you expect to answer the telephone? Margaret Thatcher? <laughs> oh, see, I've rung you before. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I, uh, I think I do. It's uh, Betty, isn't it? God, not oh, another one. There's a whole tribe of Bettys all over Sydney, and they're all ringing John Laws. What is Betty? God, we're knee-deep in idiots. And, uh, Betty, what's the problem this time, darling? Well... She won't know. I don't know. Told you so. <laughs> I imagine. Ring me about something. What is it? Oh, I'm just nervous. She's worse than my bitch. Is, uh, is it that boss of yours again? Still won't give you the money, huh? Yes, that's Yeah, right. good for him. Is he, is he there? Betty, maybe if I could uh, 
speak to him. Can I do that? No, he's out in the kitchen making coffee. Sir, so, we're all doing it. Sounds like a pretty nice fella. No, he'll put three teaspoons of sugar in. He always does. Oh, damn. Sorry. Just a minute. Becky, I know what you're doing. You better stop it now. <laughs> so, it was you. No, 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 it wasn't. No, what wasn't? Uh, it wasn't me talking to John Laws on the radio. All right. I warned you. Well, where, 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 where are you going? I'm going to get a newspaper and a spanner. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Simon, why are you helping me? Because you're my sister and that's what big brothers are for. Since when? Since just now. And besides, all this art stuff interests me. Oh, you've got to be joking. I mean, you couldn't even name three artists. Of course I could. Go on, then. Leonardo da Vinci, Leonardo Ferrari and Leonardo Maserati. <laughs> Simon, the last two are cars. Yeah, but they're all French. <laughs> so anyway, when is this exhibition your class is putting on? It's on Thursday and you're not coming. Well, I want to see all the paintings. You just want to see all the girls in my class and chat them up. So, what's wrong with that? It's embarrassing. Why? Because they actually like you, and I can't cope with that. <laughs> well, what's the point of having a sister if she won't let me chat up a friend? <laughs> anyway, which one of these are you going to enter in the exhibition? Well, that's what I'm trying to decide, but uh, I can only enter one, but I want it to be my best. Hey, how about this one? Why do you like that one in particular? It's the only one with the girl in it. <laughs> You're a big help. Oh, Simon, I'd never. Hey, what are all these? They're paintings. Oh, they're really good. Well, when are you going to finish them? <laughs> they are finished. Oh, yeah, yeah, I knew that, yeah. Uh, how do you do it, Deb? You mean painting? Yeah, it's a real gift, isn't it? Oh, you think so? Yeah, I mean, you take something, paint it, and make it look nothing like it. <laughs> well, it's got a point there, you know. I mean, take this one. What about it? It looks exactly like nothing. It's <laughs> an impression. Oh, I see. Hey, have you got any of Bob Hawke? He's good to do impressions of. <laughs> my dust, darlings. <laughs> Very funny. Oh. Hey, this is good. What is? This one you painted upside down. Not upside down. It looks upside down. I'm telling you, it is not upside down. Well, why'd you sign it upside down? <laughs> no, I look better the other way. Nudge, you know nothing about art. Maybe so, but I know what I like. What's that? Food. <laughs> is any around? <laughs> Who are you reading? No, I'm Mrs. Kelly. Oh, I heard you pick up the phone just then. I was, I was, I was uh, just cleaning it. You were not. You, you were going to ring John Laws again. A little bird told me. What little bird? Beaver the owl. <laughs> Don't be silly. Beaver at the owl only does long distance. Never mind. Look, I have warned you this morning. Touch that phone and you're an ex-Betty. Beg yours? A late Betty. According to your mother, so you what was that? Never mind. And while we're on the subject of phone calls, how many times have you called John Lords? <sighs> Mr. Kelly, we have not established that it was I. <laughs> All right, very well then. A hypothetical Betty, whose identity shall remain unknown, has been calling John Lords. How many times has she done it? Twelve. <laughs> how could you do that? Because you deserved it. Aha, uh -huh. so it was you then? Uh, I say that I just said you deserved it and anyway I didn't mention your name good yet Betty don't you dare ever mention my name on the radio well we all know how to prevent this happening don't you all right then go on fine you ring him up go on tell everybody my name I don't care so there don't you touch the phone <laughs> Oh, hi, Deb. You're home early. Yeah, I was just trying to work out which painting to put in the exhibition. Now, I've got it down to two, but I need another opinion. Oh, let's see. Wow, I like that one. Right, that's the one, then. Oh, no, hang on. What hang on? Well, you're putting it in to sell, aren't you? That's the general idea. Yeah, well, I want to keep that one. I've always liked it. Yeah, well, so have I. But you do agree that it's my best one. Yeah, but don't you want to keep it? Yeah, but if it's my best one, then it's my best chance of getting a sale. Well, oh, what's so important about getting a sale? Dad, every year in this exhibition, there are paintings left unsold. Now, if that happens to me, I'd be absolutely devastated. Why? Because it just hangs there all day, saying to everyone, this is a lousy painting. But I just couldn't bear that. All right, look, problem solved. Now, we both want to keep it, but you want to sell it, right? Right. OK, well, you enter it in the exhibition, and I'll buy it. Don't you dare. <laughs> what am I saying? Dad, that's even worse. Who do you think eventually buys these unsold paintings? I don't know. 
The kids' parents buy them. I mean, it's the ultimate degradation. I mean, everyone knows they're just buying them because they feel sorry for the kids. Yeah, but I don't feel sorry for you. I genuinely want the painting, and my money's as good as anybody else's. Well, you're not to buy it. I'd be really ashamed if you did that to me. Well, Deborah, you can't stop me buying it. Well, yes, I can, because you're not coming to the exhibition now. I forbid it. What? Hang on. I do all the forbidding around here. <laughs> not that it does me much good. That's X. See you later, Ned. Mm, yeah. Oh, you're a bit late, aren't you? Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, make sure you do. Well, what's the radio for, Mr Kelly? Oh, I'm checking on Betty. She called in sick, but I know she's going to ring John Laws again. Dad, why don't you just give her the raise? Oh, look, I'm going to. I was always going to give her a raise, but before I could, she started John Laws. So what? So I want her to know the raise is coming from me, not from John Laws. Dad, you've been spending too much time with Betty. You're developing Betty brain. <laughs> why don't you just give her the raise? I mean, what's the matter who it's from? Yeah, I suppose you're right. I'll tell her tomorrow. Okay. See you later then. Oh, hang on. There's something you can do for me. Look, Debbie won't let me go to the exhibition tonight, but I really want that painting. Could you buy it for me? No. Oh, well, thank you very much. She won't let me go either. Why not? She has this ridiculous notion that I'll try to chat up her friends. Well, why would she think that? Because he always does. <laughs> well, you're a great help. Oh, nudge. Look, here's some money. Oh, thanks, Mr. K. <laughs> is, is this from you or John Laws? Oh, shut up. Now, look, you go to the exhibition tonight and you buy the painting. Oh, you mean like a dealer? Yeah. Well, what do I get? What, what do you get? What commission do I get? 10%, 20%? Of... You'll get 100% of a brick in the back of your head. Now, get going. And don't come back without the painting. Most imitated radio program, The John Lawrence Show. Hello. Hello? It's me again. It's her again. It's you. Yeah, remember me? Darling, remember you. This is the fifth... Fifteenth time that you've called me up. Fifteen? She told me twelve. Don't I listen know, to her. She's a liar. Well, he still won't give me the raise. Well, listen to me, sweetheart. If if you stop calling me and you started talking to him, then he might give you the raise. I'm going to. Oh. Listen to me. Listen to me. Well, well, why would he do that? To shut you up, I imagine. <laughs> if you work for me, I would. I'd like to, but what do you expect me to do? Come around there and smack him in the ear? Oh, could you? I saw you in for the night, then. Betty, could you just do one thing for me? What? Go away. <laughs> Don't ever ring me again. Get on, you lousy. You can fix anything. <laughs> Look, what's keeping Nudge? And have you thought that Debbie's going to be mad when she finds out you bought her painting? Well, let her be. The important thing is that in the war between men and women, I have won another battle, and I get to keep the painting I wanted. I hear they come now. Dad, you'll never believe it. My painting was the first one sold. No, darling, that's wonderful. Uh, do you know who bought it? No, I didn't see it. It was already claimed when I got there, but look who I ran into. Nudge was there. Oh, what a surprise. Yes, yeah, so I wonder what he was doing there. Let's ask him, shall we? Nudge, what were you doing there? I bought this painting. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I didn't realise he was serious when he said he was interested in art. Nudge, you bought the wrong painting. Yeah, but it's good, bud. Well, why didn't you buy Debbie's? Dad! Because it was too late and it was already sold, so I bought this one. But it seems to speak to me, and Debbie said if I liked it, then it was a good painting. Well, how much did it cost you? Five bucks. Here's the rest of your money back, Mr. Gillen. Dad! Oh, it was a lend, it was a lend. No, you don't understand. Why'd you spend five bucks buying this painting? Well, Simon, I don't know much about art, but I know what I like. So? So I like apples. Oh. <laughs> Betty, 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 I don't know why you're here, but thank goodness you are. Look, I've got something to say. Kelly, I know I should have said it before. Oh, I hope you don't mind, but there's someone here who wants to see you. What? Oh, it's late at this time of night? Oh. <laughs> it's, it's John Laws. Is your name Kelly? Uh, yes. For God's sake. Would you give this woman a rise? But I was going to. I know you were going to, but do it now. I want to see it. Give her the rise. <laughs> All right, here you are, Betty. Oh, Mr. Kelly, you shouldn't have. <laughs> Look, why, why are you doing this? Why am I doing it? I talk to prime ministers. I talk to leaders of state. I talk to fat people and thin people and mad people and rich people and poor people, but never in my entire life have I had to talk to anybody. <laughs> she has ruined my life. Yeah, I know how you feel. Well, you work with her every day, don't you? Yeah. Well, give yourself a raise. 
That's very nice. Oh, oh, do you want to buy it? Well, how much do you want for it? I'll let you have it for what I paid. 20 bucks. <laughs> okay, all right. You got yourself a deal. You don't really like that painting, do you? Do I like the painting? I hate the painting. It's the worst painting I've ever seen in my life. But I love the frame. These frames are worth an awful lot of money these days. <laughs> Is a Gary Riley production for the Australian Television Network.